In this video, we are going to talk about the cytomegalovirus infection. Right, so this is caused by cytomegalovirus or CMV, also known as human herpes virus 5, right? Megalo is large, so this cytomegalovirus is the largest virus in the herpes viride family. Now, how is it transmitted? Right, the CMV is transmitted in the following ways. Blood transfusions, sexual transmission, saliva, because it um, replicates in the salivary glands, organ transplants, and urine. In addition to these ways, the CMV can actually cross the placenta. So it's one of the torch infections, right? So uh, we have a separate video on uh, congenital cytomegalovirus infection. So you can click the link on the top right corner and watch the congenital CMV infection. For now, let's talk about the pathogenesis. How does it cause infection? The CMV uh, binds to integrins. Right. This will lead to activation of the integrins and induction of cellular morphological changes. Right. This will lead to activation of signal transduction pathways such as focal adhesion uh, kinases and also apoptotic pathway. Right. This will lead to cell damage and the clinical manifestations depends on the organ or tissue which is affected. Like most of the herpes viruses, this virus can actually remain latent in mononuclear cells, that's B and T cells, and macrophages. Now, let's look at the clinical features. All right. So, uh, we are going to divide uh, uh, the, the features in terms of uh, status of the immune system. Right. So, we will begin with uh, features in immunocompetent patients. Right. So, in immunocompetent patients, about 90% of the cases are asymptomatic, right? They don't even show symptoms. In less than 10% of the cases, the patients can present with CMV or uh, mononucleosis. They are also called mono-like symptoms, right? And these include fever, malaise, myalgia, arthralgia, uh, and also fatigue and headache. Less common features include sore throat, cervical lymphadenopathy, hepatomegaly, and splenomegaly. Right. So these are mono-like symptoms, right? We can uh, mistake them uh, with uh, the infectious mononucleosis caused by EBV. So how do we differentiate them, right? Unlike uh, in infectious mononucleosis, which is caused by EBV, a heterophile antibody test or mono test is actually negative in case of CMV, right? So we're going to look at it later in diagnosis, right? So this is what happens in immunocompetent patients, right? So you can see him, he is immunocompetent, right? What's about in immunocompromised patients, right? So, in this case, these patients can present with CMV mononucleosis, right? And also CMV pneumonia, which is interstitial pneumonitis. And on chest x-ray, it shows diffuse uh, bilateral interstitial infiltrates. They also present with CMV retinitis. And on fundoscopy, right, we can see pizza pie or cheese-like uh, appearance right so pizza pie it can be a buzzword for you right in some cases there can be also cmv esophagitis or cmv colitis right and this one on endoscopy examination of the gi tract which we can see linear ulcers right the other features include adrenal insufficiency and CMV encephalitis. So this encephalitis is presented with impaired cognitive function and neurological deficits. Right. Let's look at diagnosis. Right. As I said before, the first way is monotest. Right. And so in this case, 
the heterophile antibody test will be negative, right? Because it's, it will be positive in EBV infection, right? Because those antibodies, those heterophile antibodies, they are produced by cells which are infected by EBV, right? So this is not EBV, but because of the symptoms which are more like similar, that's why we are encouraged to do this monospot test. Right, so you can click the link on the top right corner to watch the EBV. The other method, uh, we can do serological test. If the disease is active, we can actually detect the CMV IgM antibodies and also a fourfold increase in the levels of IgG antibodies. If the disease is inactive, we can actually detect the IgG antibodies in the absence of IgM antibodies, right? As I said, on fundoscopy, we can also uh, see retinal hemorrhages and cotton wool spots, right? So these are referred to as pizza pie appearance, pizza pie appearance. Okay, so they look like this. Right, here you can see multiple perivascular retinal hemorrhages right these are what blotch red patches here on white outline right and we can also see areas of retinal uh, necrosis right these fluffy white patches right in black outline right so these are visible in central and temporal retina we can also do peripheral blood smear, right? In this case, we will detect large atypical lymphocytes with intranuclear inclusion bodies that have an oil eye appearance. So we saw this in our EBV uh, video, but this appearance is highly specific for cytomegalo infection, right? And it looks like this. Here you can see. Now, to conclude this video, let's talk about the treatment, right? So, as I said before, in immunocompetent uh, patients, there is no treatment which is uh, needed, but in immunocompromised. Firstly, we have Valgan Cyclover, right? So, this is a pro-drug for what? For Gans Cyclover, right? So, uh, here is your Gans Cyclover, right? So the first one here is mainly used for peripheral lesions, right? So it is, um, we can say it is best oral bioavailability when compared to cancer right? And also we use foscanet, right? Foscanet is used like mainly in uh, more resistant infections, especially if there is a UL97 gene mutation.